Welcome to Gospel Apostolic Church, Iketa Parish, where we raise ambassadors for Christ. Join us and together we will journey through a mind renewing, soul lifting, spirit transforming experience in God's presence through His Word. Let your transformation begin. Thank you, Jesus. I want you to just reminisce on the faithfulness of God upon your life. And just ponder over the Lord's faithfulness concerning your life. And just begin to appreciate Him. Say, Lord, I thank you. That I am standing today. Oh. Maybe the devil is telling you, why, why? Is there any reason to thank God? You are still trusting Him for that thing. He's yet to do it. Here you are. This He has not done. That He has not done. Look at Brasso Susu. Look at Sister Susu. Look at this. Look at that. Look at this. Look at that. Look at this. So why should I thank God? But I want you to look at your life and say, Lord, I thank you. Lord, I thank you.
forever be grateful to the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Go ahead and celebrate the King of Glory. Father, we thank you. We are grateful to you. Grateful for all that you have done for us. Grateful for the wonderful things you have done in our midst. Grateful for that which is about to manifest. Blessed be your name forevermore. Lord, as we are about to hear your word, we pray that you speak to our hearts. Open our eyes that we may behold wondrous things out of your Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Blessed be your name. Hallelujah. In the mighty name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. And the people shouted in the name of Amen. Shall we have our seat in God's presence? God bless you. Let's open our Bible to Psalm. 97 Psalm 97 We are going to read together Psalm 97 verse 1 Are we there? Are we there? Oh We are still waiting for some people Okay, don't worry, it's on the screen 1, 2, 3 Go, the Lord reign it. Let a multitude of the island glad thereof. Hallelujah. The Lord reign it. Let the earth rejoice. Hallelujah. Somebody is going to break forth into a joyful song this year. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Because our God reigns. I want you to tell somebody, our God reigns. The title of our message, our God reigns. We thank God as we celebrate the sixth anniversary of G Gospel Apostolic Church, Ikeja Parish, today. Exactly six years ago, 13th of January, 2013, this model, this parish was established. Exactly six years ago. So today clocks the sixth year of the existence of this church. Hallelujah. I thought somebody was going to clap there. A lot of things have happened in the last six years. Great testimonies like we have heard, even many that we have not heard. Great testimonies, great things have happened. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Our God indeed reigns over the heavens. God reigns in the heavens over the earth and beneath the earth. Bible says that at the mention of the name of Jesus every knee must bow of things in heaven of things on earth and of things beneath the earth and that every tongue confess that Jesus is Lord. That is, he has the supreme authority in heaven, on earth, and beneath the earth, and even in the seas, and everywhere.
Hallelujah. That Jesus is Lord to the glory of God the Father. He rules in the affairs of men. God rules. God reigns. God has dominion. God is still in charge. No matter what you are going through, God is still in charge. I want you to look at somebody, tell him or her, no matter what you are going through, God is still reigning. God is still reigning. Therefore, rejoice. Hallelujah. I don't know what you are going through. I have a word for you. Whatever it is, in the next 20 years, probably the picture will be clearer. In the next 50 years, if Jesus has not come, <laughs> your, your grandchildren, great-grandchildren will be here. If you have been called to glory, if you are still here, you will still be making impact, tremendous impact. Hallelujah. And you will understand it all. It will, be, it will have become very clear to you then. God, this is just a phase of your life. God reigns. God is not moved an inch by what you are going through. He is not caught on our ways. Hallelujah. So God rules over the affairs. Of, look at what is happening in Nigeria. God is still reigning. You say, wow, why is this happening? Why is this happening? Some nations were like this before. America used to be like this. What you call the Great Britain, so to say, used to be like this. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When righteousness takes over, when the sons of the kingdom, when Zion begins to possess its possession and deliver saviors, come from Zion to take over the mountains and strategic places to declare the lordship of Jesus. If Jesus tarries in the next 50 years, Nigeria will become hallelujah. I'm not here to preach about Nigeria. God enthrones and he dethrones at his own will. He lifts up one. Go and ask Nebuchadnezzar. He had to go to the University of Zoology to learn that lesson. God sent him down to, you know, University of Emergency to study zo PhD in Zoology. To know that God, so to set in the, you know, the screws and the knots in his head. And he said, ah, <laughs> yes, I learned. That yes, yes, God indeed reigns in the affairs of men. He gives it to whoever he will. And while he was there studying zoology, God did not put it in the mind of anyone to overthrow him. And after he had learned his lesson, he was restored. Hallelujah. I want you to tell somebody, God reigns. He does whatever he likes at his own discretion. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Politicians, whether American president or uh, Queen of England, Prime Minister, of um, U UK or whatever, no matter how long they reign, even the ones that, you know, in Africa, you know that's synonymous with black men, reigning, ruling for 30 something years, but one day they were kicked out. But God reigns forever. Nobody can kick him out. Nobody can say, ah, 
Oh God, you know the rain. Oh yeah, oh yeah. I mean, make another person come through now. No. Hallelujah. So he is God all by himself from one generation to another. The Bible says one generation who praise him to another. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And um, of a truth, we have enjoyed the reign and the, the supremacy, the sovereignty of the power of God in this house. I see quite a number of testimonies springing forth, like I said during the Thanksgiving, young men, young guys that were students then, and some of them are fast rising in their career now. Some of them are on their own. I remember some of them, somebody even declared, the moment declaration was made, and we started out at Jobifele, I remember one person said, it was as if God waited for the institution of this parish and that this parish was set up for his own lifting and that same person is is you know is still in our midst today and is a great testimony hallelujah and many more many more many more great things have happened in the year in the in the church uh, in in the years to the manifestation of god's glory time will not permit us to start sharing all these things hallelujah hallelujah but we know that of a truth we have enjoyed the greatness of his power and his reign in this house blessed be the name of the lord the Bible says in Psalm 66, verse 3, it said, Say unto the Lord, how terrible are thy works. Through the greatness of thy power, your enemies submit themselves unto you. Through the great, because God reigns, he said, through the greatness of your power, your enemies submit themselves. You know, wherever and whenever God reigns, the enemies are put in a box. They cannot operate freely. They are constricted. They are constrained. And the they, life is almost sniffed out of them. And they will just say, I quit. How many of us are familiar with WWE? You know, I, there was a time which we used to watch. There is one of their, I, I believe it's all about entertainment. You know, One of their products, so to say, they call it I Quit Match. I Quit Match. And you know, one of the, 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 uh, the what, what do you call them? You know, the wrestlers will so beat the other to stupor that they will give him the mic. He will say, I quit, I quit. Hallelujah. That was all the match was all about. So, the moment you beat the guy and you, the, the referee puts the mic in his mouth and he doesn't say, I quit, that means he still has strength. But you, you they will deal with him such that. He cannot, he can't go, you know, he can't go any further. So all you, you just have enough strength to say, I quit. You know, that's exactly what happens to the enemy when God is at work. The enemy is put in a straight, you know, in, in, in constriction such that they quit and they submit themselves. Bible says the strangers shall be afraid and they shall run out of their hiding places. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I pray 
as the Lord reigns in your heart, in your life today, every enemy of righteousness, every enemy of God's purpose in your life will submit themselves to the Lordship of Christ Jesus in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. The reign of God, that is the establishment of his kingdom, sets in motion the greatness of his power. He said, through the greatness of your power, the enemies submit themselves. So wherever Christ reigns, there is no room for the enemy to operate. Wherever Christ reigns, people, he said, he, he said thy people shall be willing in the day of thy power. Wherever God reigns, there is release of power. In a life whereby God reigns, there is fire. It's not a rise today, fall tomorrow. You know, you are not being propelled. When Christ reigns in your life, they don't push you to do anything. There is this burning, there is this zeal, there is this passion that rises up in you. Receive that passion. Receive that zeal as the Lord reigns in your life today in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. The reign of Christ or the reign of God brings the kingdom of God into our hearts. So the reign of God at the same time establishes God's kingdom in our hearts such that it becomes easy to conform with his will. The will of God becomes the order of the day in our lives. So whatever we do is already ordered from heaven because there is a seamless connection. Why? Because Christ has filled your heart. Because God is reigning in your heart. So he said, whatever you ask shall be done. He said, you shall decree a thing and it shall be established. He said, whatever you bind in heaven, in, on earth, is bound in heaven. But something happened in the spiritual before that. Christ is already reigning in you. The spirit of Christ dwells in you. So you cannot declare a thing except it had been revealed to you. Elijah said, as the Lord lives before whom I stand. So before he could declare that there shall not be rain for three and a half years, he had already stood before, and not that he stood before, the word before whom I stand was a habitual tense. I stand before him not every week, not once in a month, not twice in a week, not thrice in a week, every day, every moment. Even when I'm sleeping, I'm standing before him. That is, it doesn't mean literally standing physically. Even when I'm eating, I'm standing. That is, I am connected. Even when I'm asleep, I am connected. I'm receiving notes. I'm receiving 
uh, were, you know, what do you call it? Pings and, um, you know, communication. There, there's, there's an easy flow of communication. You send, you receive, you send, you receive. He says one thing, you pick it up. He says this, you pick it up. He says this, you pick it up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, as you do that, the kingdom of God is established in your heart. The will of God is done in your heart. When you are making decisions, you are making decisions from God and of God. You are speaking from the depth within. Even sometimes when you make errors and God tells you, mm -mm, go back and correct that. You are obedient enough to align that, oh, no, sorry, I said this earlier on, but I have received an instruction from God that, no, this is not the way we should go. Hallelujah. Said, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And in verse 13, he said, for thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, and forever. Amen. So, wherever God reigns, there is joy unspeakable, joy unspeakable. The reign of Christ births eternal joy. The reign of Christ births eternal bliss. Bible says, rejoice ye heavens. Revelation chapter 12, verse 12. Rejoice ye heavens and ye that dwell therein. Hallelujah. Shouts of joy and victory resound in the tents of the righteous. The Lord's right hand has done mighty things. Psalm 118 verse 16. Shouts of joy. Wherever God reigns, that's the tent of the righteous. The tent of the righteous is the dwelling place of God. Another name for that is Zion. So he said, shouts of joy, songs of victory, songs of salvation, victory, blessing, restoration, dominion, healing, and so many good things, manifestation. He said, they will never cease where Christ reigns. Because his mighty hand does valiant things, mighty things. His mighty hand perform, or his right hand performs valiantly. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He said, rejoice ye heavens and ye that dwell therein. And woe to the inhabitants. Of the earth because the devil the adversary of the brethren has been sent down you know the descendants of earth here that the bible was talking about here they are the people that are attached to the value system of the earth rejoice ye heavens those whose hearts are focused. He said, let your heart be focused on the heavenly places. We have no permanent conversation here. They that dwell, dwell, dwell in the heavenly places. Though we are in the earth, yet we are not of the earth. Because it is a passing through. No matter how long we stay here on earth, 
It is not permanent. No matter how long. So whatever you do, always have eternity in view. Yes, eternity dwells in the hearts of, he has set eternity in the heart of men. This is eternal life that they may know God. And Jesus Christ, whom he has sent. But that eternity, yes, starts right here. It, be, it started, you know, eternity past, eternity present, and eternity future. When at the appearing of Christ, we will be with him forevermore. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So Jesus wants to reign in our hearts. Know ye not that your body is the temple of God and his spirit dwells within you? He said the kingdom of God is not here, it's neither here nor there, but it is in your heart. It is in you. So God wants to dwell in our hearts. He said rejoice ye heavens. And ye that dwell. There. So you are interested. Abraham, in spite of all the promises and all the blessings and everything that he had, he was not carried away. So he made a tent that, was, that had spiritual significance. Why? Because he kept and remained focused on the city which had foundation whose builder and maker was God. That kind of city, you can't find it here on earth. And by the reason of that, he transmitted that value, that eternal value system, eternity mindset, kingdom addiction. He translated that, transmitted that into the mind of Isaac. He said, by faith, Abraham dwelt with the patriarchs in the tent. In spite of all that they had, they dwelt in the tent. That was significant. Now look, there is something. Don't get stuck to the value system of the world. And you, can't, you start counting on your millions, your billions, and your trillions, and you, know, and you become carried away, and everything just turns to madness. It's not all about that. It's not all about that. There is more. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So he said, but woe unto the inhabitants. They that want to, they, they are already stuck. Outside the world, they are poor. Jesus said, yes, you have a testimony that you are rich, but when I check your heavenly bank account, you are poor. You are broke, flat broke, battered and disgusted. Sorry for using those words. You are broke. <laughs> he said, you better change your value system in Revelation, in his message to the churches, the angels of the church. Hallelujah. So he said, woe unto them that dwell, that dwell, that dwell, that dwell. They dwell, they hold on tightly to the value system of the world. Because the adversary, the devil, he knows that he has short time left. So he will just deceive them to think, oh, it's all about this. Don't worry, you want money, I will give you. If you want children, I will give you. You want Anything I will give you. Gold, silver, I will give you. But, you know, just a bit of compromise there. there. Hallelujah. That will not be our portion. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I declare that whatsoever is not permitted in heaven is excommunicated in your life in the name of Jesus Christ. As the lordship of Christ is established in your life, whatsoever, he said, rejoice ye heavens, 
whatsoever is not permitted in the heavenly places is dismissed in your life today in the name of Jesus Christ. Every tree that the Father has not planted that is manifesting and spreading roots in your life today is hereby cut off in the name of Jesus Christ. Christ, as I draw this to an end, wants to extend his reign in the hearts of men. He reigns forever, but he wants to continue reigning. Like we have always heard before, one of the elements or qualities of a kingdom is territorial expansion plan. You have a king, you have the royal family, you have the citizens, of course, you have um, the constitution, you have, um, you know, every other things like rights and um, duties and everything. Okay, that um, works with the constitution. And then um, we have the territorial expansion plan. Every kingdom wants to grow. So Christ wants to extend his reign. He said, and this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached and shall reach everywhere in the world and then shall the end come. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So Christ wants to extend his reign. So there is work for us to do in the hearts of men. Our mandate as we begin as I draw this to an end, our mandate is to reach out to all and sundry declaring the lordship of Jesus Christ among all and making disciples for him among all nations. And he said unto them, all power in heaven and on earth has been given unto me. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. Teach. So our mandate is to teach, is to deliver the principles of the kingdom of God and to teach them among the nations, the commandment, those things that I have taught you, those things that I have commanded you, and said, and lo, I am with you now and always until the end of the world. Amen. Hallelujah. In Romans chapter 1, permit me to just read that. I think I have two more scriptures. Romans chapter 1. I'm going to read verses 1 to 6. Romans chapter 1, verses 1 to 6. He said, you know, I like the way Apostle Paul introduces himself. Paul, a servant of Jesus Christ, called, hallelujah. You know, he was so bold and non-apologetic about his calling. Called to be an apostle separated unto the gospel of God, which he had promised afore, that is beforehand, by his prophets in the Holy Scriptures. So, who says the gospel was not preached in the Old Testament? Hallelujah. The same Paul wrote in Galatians chapter 3, verse 8. He said, and the scripture, knowing that many Gentiles shall be called, you know, into, the, 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 they will be called into the faith, preached the gospel beforehand unto Abraham, saying, in you shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. Hallelujah. So that was a gospel hidden in you. Abraham might not have known, but that was an encoded message. It was the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ given to Abraham. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
concerning his son Jesus Christ our Lord which was made of the seed of David according to the flesh and declared to be the son of God with power according to the spirit of holiness by the resurrection from the dead by whom that is by Christ Jesus we have received grace and apostleship for obedience to the faith among all nations for his name among whom ye are the called of Jesus Christ hallelujah he has given us grace and apostleship grace and apostleship for obedience to the faith among all nations for the sake of his name so it is our god given mandate to disciple the nations it takes a disciple of christ to disciple the nations hallelujah so if we are going to declare the reign and the lordship of jesus across the globe he will reign in our hearts first hallelujah Hallelujah. I want to ask your neighbor, is Jesus reigning in your heart? And lastly, Isaiah chapter 52, verse 7. How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of him that bringeth good tidings. So songs of joy. You see, when the, when the Bible says you will sing songs of joy, it's not just that you'll be dancing alone. Say, ah, God has given me a car. Hallelujah. An infidel is giving out brand new cars to people. Please. I'm not telling you, I beg you in the name of God. You know, for those who have PhDs in tweaking messages, Say, Pastor has shaken our table again this morning and said, said that <laughs> uh, we shouldn't buy cars. Please. Now you serve you, if you like, no buy a car. <laughs> Hallelujah. He said you shall build houses. He said you shall build houses. Yeah. You see, somebody is even scared to say amen again. Yeah. You shall build houses. Yeah. You will buy cars. You will celebrate good things Amen. in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. But it goes beyond that. Yes, you will have all those which are beautiful things. Thank God for those. You see, God is blessing people in our midst. Yes. And somebody came in recently and said, wow, ah, look at you guys, you know, quite a number. It was uh, some years ago, it was like, wow. God has blessed you guys. I said, ah, hey, more cars are going to be bought this year. Yeah. There are some people that they have not even bought their own cars. Not your own car, your own cars. Yeah. Hallelujah. So let's not get distracted. Hallelujah. So, you know, I, I, as you do all those, as you, but the real juice in that, songs of joy, you know the real Jews in that is that you declare the songs of joy that will emanate from your heart. Those cars and those things that you buy and some of those things are the things that the Gentiles run after. You don't need to run after those things. I, I tell you, they will run after you. People will come to you and they will give you those things. Amen. It will even get to an extent that you will be the one giving out cars to people. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. But the real song are the prophetic songs that you will be singing. Prophetic declaration about the goodness of God. Declaring those things that be not as though they were declaring things that are yet to unfold 
concerning the kingdom of God, even concerning people's lives. You declare upon, you know, mountains are strategic places. There are economic mountains. There are spiritual mountains. There are, ha, let, me, let, me, let, me, let, me know, let me know good there. Hallelujah, that's for another day. They declare, you know, a mountain is a God-given place. It's a domain of influence. Is that they stand because they have been empowered. So there is spiritual stability. This is a, you know, Caleb said, give me this mountain. And they will stand upon the mountains and begin to declare. Hallelujah. What did he say? He said, they bring the good tidings of good. They publish. The Lord gave the word. And great was the company of them that you will publish the word. This year. You will publish good things. Glad tidings of salvation. I was telling somebody, you know, I think if quite a few said, begin. This year is a year of publication. You will publish great things. Hallelujah. I see many, many publishers rising in the house in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. You will publish the goodness of God in songs, in write ups, in, you know, in, 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 across the globe in the name of Jesus Christ. You will take the message of salvation even in your place. In, in your career, in your industry, not just wearing color alone, not just as an apostle, as a prophet in the marketplace, as an evangelist, as a teacher, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. They publish salvation. They say unto Zion, Thy God reigneth. That will be a testimony in the name of Jesus Christ. I said that will be a testimony in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Receive that grace to proclaim the Lordship of Jesus Christ. Everywhere you go to, men will see you and they will take notice. They will bear testimonies that you have been with Jesus. In the last six years, I don't know, have you gone through any form of baptism? Have you gone through any form of spiritual transformation? I pray, as from today, there will be a new order in your life. In this year, you will declare prophetically. Amen. You will experience prophetic invasion. Amen. Heavenly invasion. Amen. Apostolic progression. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Paul and Silas, they joined the league of the prophets and teachers in Acts chapter 13. And while they were ministering unto the Lord, the Spirit spoke. He said, separate unto me Barabbas and Saul, because I have called them. Ah, I see somebody being separated. Amen. There is a separation. Amen. Amongst your folks, there is a separation. Amen. They will say, you are too proud. Why? Because there has been a shift in the spiritual places. There has been a shift. There is a separation. There is a separation. There will be an, a, a spiritual adjustment. The Lord is opening a new chapter in your life. Something is about to break forth. In the name of Jesus Christ. Songs of joy like never before. In a new order, you will sing this year. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Jesus. Shall we just lift our hands and begin to
celebrate Jesus. Let's say, Lord, I thank you. Because Jesus reigns. The reign of Christ has ushered in a new order in my life. It's the breaking forth of a new beginning. Joy comes in the morning. Yes. It's the morning period. A new chapter. A new order. A new level. A new season entirely. Like never before. Thank you, Jesus. For some of you, God is calling you forth. And you will think all things, everything is working against you. You will experience divine interruption. Disruption of the order that you have been used to right from birth. It's not man. It's not devil. It is God. You have been so stuck to that order that you believe it is God's portion for you. The word of the Lord will visit you. The word of the Lord will come to you. Begin to declare, say, Lord, I walk in the realm of new possibilities, new order. Thank you, Jesus. Blessed be your name forever. That fire in the mighty name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you. For somebody under the sound of my voice, everything has been said. But all you need is just that fire to set you on course. Because without that fire, all you would do is rising and falling. You rise today, you fall tomorrow. And as long as you keep doing that, you remain stuck and invalid. I pray that will not be your testimony. You will never be invalid for the rest of your life. That fire that will make you to be rightly set. So that even where you have not spoken, your lifestyle will declare that yes, of a truth, Jesus reigns. That will be your testimony. As you have laid your hands on the plow, you will not look back. Receive grace to finish strong. Thank you, Jesus. In the mighty name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ.